Hey, welcome everyone to Celebrity Josh. If you are watching this, it's probably on YouTube. If you're just listening to this, it's on a podcast. Uh, and then in the descriptions of both, you can go see the opposite if you feel like looking at me or not, or looking at our super guest today, uh, Nadine Bridges. Is that correct? Yeah. Close. What, yeah. You're, 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 Bridges or Donaghy, either one works. <laughs> Donaghy? Well, your name on Facebook is Bridges. I know. It was in high school, and I never changed it. it, it doesn't it also... Oh, is it different on Skype? Let me... Is it say Donaghy? Oh, that's right, because you sent me your email address, and it was all Donaghy, and I'm like, who's Donaghy? What's going on here? But it didn't... I didn't... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so why... Why was your name different in high school? Um, it, it, kind of a weird story. I, my mom got remarried when I was younger, and uh, my name got changed to that person's name. And when I turned 18, I changed it back. So it was Donaghy, and then it was Bridges, and now it's back to Donaghy. Yep, exactly. Okay, so Nadine Donaghy is, well, I guess how we met uh, was... I think I joined some screenwriter Facebook groups this week because I was like, oh, my God, I want to get back into screenwriting. And then I saw Nadine post that, hey, everyone, I just finished my first screenplay. And everybody's like, oh, my God. Uh. And I'm like, oh, I should interview you about that on my podcast. And, and maybe I messaged you or you messaged me. And, and you were like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and that's it. That's basically all I know about you. Yeah, yeah that's definitely the most exciting thing that I've done this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what did I just see? Is there something else that you were posting about on Facebook or something? I feel like... Uh, huh. Maybe a podcast? Like doing a podcast or being on a podcast? Oh, wait, uh, do you have a podcast as well? I do, yeah. A group of friends and I, we, we do a scary movie podcast. Oh, right, right. You just invited me to the scary movie podcast page or group. Yeah, yeah. you know, to like the page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so you're clearly a creative dynamo, which is very exciting for for my millions of listeners to hear about. And it's it's possible I have millions of listeners. Uh, Apple says I don't have enough posts or, or to, to get analytics yet, so we don't know. We don't know. This could be zero people. It could be a billion people. Yeah. Um, so let's just let's go positive. Let's say it's a billion. So okay, yeah. so Nadine is clearly a screenwriter and a podcaster. And you are, you were just telling me just before this, you said you're in Virginia, because I said I was on the porch here. What's the date today? Like May 28th? Yeah, May 28th. Okay, it's May 28th, 2020. I just like to tell people that so they can sort of put it in context of, is it pre-quarantine? Is it, is it in the middle of the pandemic? Is it sort of, and I guess things are sort of opening up again, so we can, that's, exactly. that's why we don't seem as panicked as, as, uh, as maybe podcasts that were done earlier in the pandemic. Um, Oh, look at this. I just have to show you. Uh, look, there's a dog. Uh, usually, well, the past couple of weeks, I've just been saying hi to all the dogs walking by. And I go, hello, what's your dog's name? And that way, next time I see them, I can say hi. So I've met the neighborhood dogs. Uh, do you have a dog? No, I don't. I have a cat and some fish. Uh, does the cat want to eat the fish? Uh, no, maybe, if he could get to them. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, can. he's probably... No, that's good, because he's like, mmm, licking his lips all the time. So you're, so yeah, that's right. I said I was on the porch, and uh, it's nice and warm, and you're like, yeah, it's pretty, did you say it was warm in Virginia as well? It is. It's hot and very humid today. Right, and I was like, oh, is that like West Virginia? And like, oh, that's very different, but they have the same name. So Virginia, where is Virginia? That, uh, I'm trying to picture, like, what's a city in Virginia? Richmond. Richmond, Virginia. I feel like I've been there, maybe not. I lived. Oh, I used to live on Richmond Street. Maybe that's what's confusing me. Um, and you've always lived there. Yes. Yep. I have. I mean, I used to live in like Northern Virginia, like close to Washington D.C. And then, uh, but that was when I was way younger. So mostly all Richmond. Okay. And uh, and do you have a, a job? What are you up to in in uh, in Virginia? Yeah. So I work like a regular nine to five type job in insurance, and then I've just been doing some screenwriting on the side in my free time and then working on this podcast with my friends. That's awesome. I just, I haven't post, I haven't posted this yet, but I interviewed somebody a couple of days ago who was uh, like a corporate recruiter for like a little bit and then he didn't like it. And then 
somebody he used to work with was insurance. No, maybe, I don't know. He went into insurance for 20 years and then uh, he decided he wanted to, I think he was watching a TV show and in the credits he saw the name of somebody he used to work with at the recruiting company or something who was like a screenwriter and he called him up and then got him into screenwriting. So he's gone into screenwriting. So, so there's something about insurance that makes people want to write movies, clearly. <laughs> yeah, all those exciting things that go on day to day. Yeah, you're probably like, ah, enough of this. Um, although somebody did help me. I, I met a woman years ago who uh, she worked on insurance for films. So like she would read the scripts and decide how much to insure them for. And so I went to, vi I went to visit her in L.A. for a couple of weeks. And that's where, where I finished uh, my screenplay because she would come home after work and sort of look at my pages. And it just helped me. Uh, you know, I felt like if I'm in L.A. and somebody's looking at my scripts, that's, that's how I got to finish it. Because otherwise it's very hard. I find it very hard to, to sit there and, and write. So you, you work in insurance. And you doing you you're screenwriting and you're doing a podcast now, okay. And then how did you, and you and if you have anything more interesting than my questions, you can just go ahead and interrupt me. But how did you uh, like get into screenwriting? Did you take a class or? No, I haven't taken any classes. I would love to take a class. Uh, I basically I had an idea for a sitcom. Is originally what I started writing. Um, where it kind of was based around the same group of friends that I do the podcast with, where we are very into like horror movies and true crime, but we also all go to church together. And we live in a very, like the church that we go to is like very strict. It's very um, like, it has a lot of really kind, sweet, lighthearted people. And so kind of like the contrast and the funny situations that arise from us, like walking in, joking about Ted Bundy and this like sacred sweet environment and um and so yeah I kind of got into that and then once I had written some of those episodes I decided that I wanted to try to write a feature script and see what that was like wow and did so did you read books on it because like there's a certain format to you know even just knowing how to use final draft or whatever right yeah so I found a free software that I actually used called kit Sceners. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but that's what I used since it was free. And then I just watched like a ton of YouTube videos on how to and just Googled any questions that I had. And it probably needs a million corrections, but at least it's on paper and at least I can work from it. No, no, that's huge. I mean, just doing it is it's it's almost all of it. It's like it's that's amazing. And to have the motivation and the, just say, I'm going to Google this like I'm very inspired. Like, I guess I always wanted to write a screenplay and I finally signed up for a college course like I don't know, 12 years ago or something. And I had to take the first act class and the second act. And then I took the second act again, like a year later or something to finish it. And then I had to take the third act class with her. And then I still had to finish. I don't know what I did. I guess I finished at my friend's house or something. Can't remember. Or maybe, or maybe I took her class after. I can't even remember. Uh, but then I entered my first draft into a contest in LA and my teacher's like, no, you can't enter a contest. And like, it's not, you know, it's just your first draft. Like, ah, oh, it's, uh, well, it's already entered. And then I wound up winning. And then a producer in New York gave me all these notes. And then I just never did anything with it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I find it very hard to sit down and, and mo like get disciplined and stuff. And now I'm like, God, it's 10 years have gone by. I could have been in Hollywood at this point. And I just emailed the guy again. And he's like, I don't even remember the movie. And I'm like, okay. Um, I mean, but, you, can't uh, change, you can't change what you did in those 10 years, but you could change what you do tomorrow. And you could take those same notes he gave you if you wanted. And start doing it again and then put it into more contest. I like it. I like it. That's true. I was just thinking that actually, like just to, you know, since I've already got it and I put so much work into it, sure. Why not enter some more contests and, yeah. and just, What's it about? Uh, it's, um, it's about a copywriter. Uh, cause I was working in advertising. So it's this copywriter who can't make decisions, which is also me. And then, uh, he meets a girl at a coffee shop uh, who serves him coffee and he says the, he tries to tell a joke and he says the wrong thing or something and then he writes a commercial about the situation and in commercials uh, you know we well I don't know if they still do it but we also oh, always made like animatics like we'd do a rough cartoon version of it uh, mm -hmm. with just drawings and then focus group it and the focus group would say I don't get this or you know this is what I would change and then the focus group says what the character in the commercial should have done and he says that next time he goes to the coffee shop and the girl likes him now and he's like oh my god so he starts writing commercials about this guy and this girl and just does whatever the focus group tells him to do. And then it sort of gives him this superpower uh, that he knows what to do in every situation because he just asks the focus group. So it's called focus group. Um, oh, that's funny. That's a great idea. 
Yeah, it's kind of fun. I, I, I remember I told it to, uh, I met this girl in LA when I was shooting a commercial there years ago and she was the bartender and a producer was hitting on her at the hotel and, um, but she was a, sta- a sketch comedian. And so I went on my own to see her show and then we kept in touch. And then one time in LA, I was like, do you want to meet up? She's like, yeah, can I bring my boyfriend? I'm like, uh, I guess. Is he hot? She's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. Um, but then I was like, what do you do, the boyfriend? He's like, oh, I'm a director. I'm like, oh, tell me more. And he, he directed the movie, uh, oh, what was it called? Uh, k- not Crash, not Crunch, Crank. Uh, so it was like a big hit or whatever. And, um, and yeah, I told him my little pitch there. And he's like, that's a great idea. Send it to me when it's done or whatever. And that's what was motivating me to, to get it done. But I think by the time I finally reached out to his assistant again, uh, his assistant's like, oh, I was fired or something. He wasn't working with him. And then... Uh, and there, yeah, and then I was never able to reach him again. But, but yeah, so clearly, yeah, clearly people like the idea. So I might have to look at it again and go, uh, you know, up, maybe update the technology. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of cell phones I had people using or whatever, but hopefully it's it's universal enough. The producer who gave me notes, uh, he just emailed back, says he doesn't really work with comedies anymore because they're so subjective, so they're probably harder to sell or whatever. Um, but who knows? Yeah, maybe I can send it to you and you can give me your thoughts. Yeah, sure. I'd love to read it. Because that's why I uh, I joined, like, after I had my little crisis going, oh, my God, I, why didn't I work on that more? I just joined a bunch of screenwriting groups on Facebook. I don't know, just for motivation, just to, to be around people like that. Because I really enjoyed my class. Like, it's, it's cool to be in a class with other people writing. And then you can sort of, you know, you're supporting each other and you're reading the pages out. And it, and that, that's what I felt I had to do. Like, a friend bought me a screenwriting book. He was a director. But I'm like, I, I would find it very hard to sit down and read the book and, and write it myself. I mean, maybe if I had, I don't know. I've always felt very alone. Like, if I had a girlfriend or a wife or something that would sit beside me and she was writing beside me and we were keeping each other company, I might be able to do it. But, but otherwise, I find it hard to sit alone. And especially with something like this that could take a long time and maybe nobody's ever going to see it or whatever. Like, it's almost a bit easier to write stand-up comedy because it's like, well, I can write some jokes for five minutes and I'll go and do it, you know, and people will see it. Uh, like, I just signed up for an online open mic on Sunday just to force myself to do some comedy. And uh, so I got to write some little jokes and, and then I'll do my six-minute bit on Zoom or however they're doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so you've motivated me, you've excited me, and I like your your thing about not living in the past, because I find it so hard, even the past five years since I left my copywriting job. I'm like, what did I just do for five years? I could have been in LA. I could have done a PhD. Like, it's so easy to just waste time and go, oh, yeah, I'll do this tomorrow, and then whatever. Yeah. So I'm so glad I, you're not... Yeah. Well, I feel like something that can help, too, is, like, setting, like, tiny attainable goals. Like, if you wanted to work on your screenplay, then you could be like, I'm going to force myself to sit down here at my computer for 15 minutes every day. And if you feel inspired, then you can sit for longer. But at least, you know, no matter what, I'm doing at least a little bit of work each day. Yeah, I heard that. I feel like I read that somewhere recently. Like it was literally that, like 15 minutes a day to say you'll do it. I can't remember who it was or if they talk about writing, but it was something like that. And I did on I was on the phone with my friend a couple of nights ago and we just said, here, let's make a schedule for tomorrow. And so my schedule was like, get up seven o'clock have breakfast, 8 o'clock, do an hour of voice auditions, 9 o'clock. What was the other thing to do? There was two things to, to do uh, that were kind of easy. And then, um, I don't know, maybe it was go through emails or something. I don't think it was that. But there was, you know, that, do an interview with someone for an hour or something. And then spend an hour writing some stand-up comedy and just post the joke of the day or whatever it is. And then, yeah, it could be sit down for an hour and write the screenplay or draw a cartoon. And so just, yeah, block out your day and... And, and say, this is what I'm going to do. And then at the end of it, yeah, like you've, you, you can say, okay, each day you've made some progress and uh, that's a very good idea. So, okay, so you were insurance, you've got your screen, you've just written a screenplay and you know, how long did it take you to write your screenplay? Not as long as I would have thought, honestly. I was pretty excited to see because I didn't, I couldn't remember when I had started when I finished last week. And so I went in to try to find in the file and see if I could figure out when I had started. And yeah. It only took, I started like late um, February and I finished late uh, May. And so three months. That's not bad. Cause yeah, yeah not too that, bad for first draft. No, that's the thing. I mean, I asked the, uh, the screenwriter was interviewing. I said, how long did it take you to, or I said, you know, how long could, he's like, well, you could write one in a weekend. I'm like, yeah, they say Rocky was written in a weekend or something. I mean, I guess you could, but 
but yeah, I, and that'd be hard. And he's like, yeah, it would just be a raw thing uh, that you'd have to rework or whatever. But yeah, three months is, is doable. Like, it's not, I mean, I don't know, you know, I've, the past three months I've done pretty much nothing, right? So if you devote yourself and tell yourself, okay, I'm going to spend the summer doing this or whatever. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I, you're probably, when you weren't working just on that either, right? So it's like, you know, yeah. how, yeah, how no, long? It's, a lot of work on the podcast. Oh my gosh, that took a so, lot more effort and time than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah, so the, which came first, your screenplays? And then when did you start this podcast? Um, the sitcom episodes I was writing came first. I was doing those with no screenwriting software, no knowledge, just, you know, putting down the thoughts I had, things that I thought would be funny, writing them into stories, and my friends and I doing little table reads of it. Um, and, uh, and then we all had the idea for the podcast. Uh, so then we started working on that. And while we were working on the podcast is when I started writing the screenplay. So like three months ago? Um... Or, or February? I don't even know. I would have to look to see when we started the podcast. We, let's see, we we put out 10 episodes, one per week, and we've got like two episodes left. So it, so it must have started about, like coming out about a month and a half ago, but we, we recorded all that like two months before that. Wow. So do you edit them or something? Is it, so it's not just raw talking? Yeah, no, no, we edit, and oh my gosh, that's what takes the most time. The editing oh, is insane yeah. how long it takes. Well, that's the thing. Like, even if I edit, I don't know, just some raw voice acting or something, like, you know, if you're, if you're recording an hour of talking, then you got to go back, takes an hour to listen, and then, you, you know, and then it's another few, like, each time, what was that? Or, yeah, that's why, like, for things like what we're doing right now, I'm just recording it, and uh, I try not to say anything stupid that I'm going to want to edit out. And then, and then I just put the raw thing because I even I'm still behind posting four of these, and there's not, I'm not even going to edit them. It's just going to post the thing. Like one of them at the beginning, you couldn't hear my voice. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to dub the few first few seconds, saying, "Oh, it's Celebrity Josh" or something, because it won't make any sense to have silence at the beginning of a podcast. Um, and and just that has uh, has hamstrung me. I'm like, oh, I got to sit down and do that, and then I got to upload this. So yeah, to fact to edit. I mean, obviously, it can help improve it and make it better quality so and uh, so good for you for putting in that work that's amazing um and so it's this podcast where you sit down how many of you are like four of you or yeah four of us and you sit down and you chat and so uh how many mics do you have is it, are you all sitting around one mic just talking yeah we do usually record just on one mic with four oh. of us it's not ideal oh. but no. whatever uh, what i've learned is that just do it like it, it doesn't really matter like I've heard podcasts where it's clearly they're in a very echoey room and it's not ideal or whatever but you know if, if it's interesting people listen to it it's just better to do it rather than trying to figure out okay because yeah I, I know a producer who's built a studio here that he rents out for podcasts the hundred dollars an hour or something and yeah he's got four mics it's a whole thing but it seems to get very complicated if you can just record each other and that's why, that's why I sort of didn't start my podcast for a while, because I was like, okay, I want to use, like, Squadcast uh, to record, like, on either end, so the, the audio will be perfect, but, well, but they don't have the feature to record video yet, so maybe I should use Skype, or maybe I should record on Squadcast and then uh, film the screen, or, I don't know, I was doing all this, and it, in the end, I decided it doesn't matter, like, you know, I'm recording on Skype, it's good enough, people can hear what we're saying, uh, yeah. I'm just do it, doing it on my phone. And then just bash it out. So at least it started. And, you know, at some point, if I want to have a Joe Rogan super studio or whatever, I can. But I just want to, I don't want to waste another 10 years waiting to do something, you know. Um, I think it's way more about the content anyway. People yes. like. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, my content's not really good either. So <laughs> I've got nothing. But I'm producing. Yeah. It is content. It is technically content. I mean, this could be, we could just be recording with the squirrel outside here. And that would be content. Um, and who, whose house do you meet at? Uh, we usually meet at Amanda's house. We call it the clubhouse because we call it the scary movie club. And so, uh, I like it. Yeah. So do you say that in the podcast? You're like, Hey, here we are in the clubhouse. Exactly. Yeah. We'll be like live from the clubhouse <laughs> and oh, then we'll like all introduce ourselves. That's right. You're Americans. So you would say clubhouse and I would say clubhouse. Yeah. Cause I'm in Ottawa just so people don't know that's in Canada. Or so people do know. Uh, okay, so you did, you got, you record, so, and then you record episode. would you do one episode per day, like when you meet up? 
Uh, so we usually try to plan out in advance because one of our friends lives like two hours away. So she has to make a two hour drive whenever we record. So we'll, we will record like that whole weekend usually and plan out which episodes we'll do because we need to do a lot of research for them depending what they are. And, uh, and so usually we'll record no less than three episodes in a weekend. And depending how much free time we all have, we may record up to six in a weekend. Oh my God, that's so much fun. And who, so yeah. does, does, uh, so does your friend who has to travel, she stays at someone's house and then it's like a whole sleepover fun thing. Yeah, she'll stay at the clubhouse. <laughs> oh man, Amanda's clubhouse. Yeah, uh. it's the party place. Wow, that's so much fun. My gosh, I wish I had a group of girls to, well, do anything with. But podcasting would be so much fun. I've always tried to find people to, I mean, I had a group of, three and then four friends that I did a, like a comedy troupe with when I was in school and stuff. And that was fun, but it's guys fight. And then one of the guys was dating my ex-girlfriend and like, uh, all gets, all drama. gets drama. Yeah. Um, but girls, they just, we're just going to do it. We're just going to get together. We're going to do our podcast. Actually, I had a friend. I, now I realized, and I was telling the story to someone this week on the interview. I'm like, Oh, I forgot about that. I recorded a podcast with my friend Renee and I recorded one with my friend Tommy, but we only, it, this was like a long time ago. And, didn't know what to do with it. I, you know, for, for years I was researching, how do you get a podcast up? What do you do with this thing? And it's only like in the past couple of months, I finally just ordered hosting. I'm like, and I spent two days going, okay, how do I get a file up? How do I uh, put ID yeah. three tags on it? All that crap. And I'd been to podcast yeah. conventions. I took a podcast class two or three years ago from that guy who has the studio in Toronto, like all this stuff or in Ottawa. Um, and I just never. Do you use, do you use Anchor? um for for hosting uh well anchor is something that we use that, that one of our friends told us about oh, and it's right, right. like so helpful for us because you just go through there and it lets you publish on spotify on apple on all these different things if you set it up through anchor right i think somebody that i met in the winter here that was giving me a tour of a studio was telling me he uses anchor and i think i looked it up it's like anchor.fm right um, and it's free, I, I think. It is free. I highly yeah. recommend it. Yeah, so I looked it up, and I think uh, it's very popular. I think I think maybe, you know, there were some downsides to it or something, like they put their own ads in it, or it has some limited features or whatever. Um, when you're trying yeah. to build an audience base, you know, sometimes you got to say, I'm fine with that for right now, and maybe I'll change my mind and switch places later. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. So good for you. And, uh I'm sure there's community of anchor users that love it and everything. I wound up going, I asked my podcast teacher, like, you know, I said, I'm trying to decide between Libsyn and, and something else. And he's like, oh, I recommend Simplecast to people. I'm like, oh, what's, and I looked that up and it seemed very simple. Like there wasn't a million different plans. There's just like one plan and, and it's unlimited or, um, and then they, they, they condense it to an MP3 instead of like full wave, but it doesn't matter. He said, that's fine. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So I, so yeah, so I, I signed up with them, uh, and I've got an affiliate link for them. I think I'll put that in the description as well. I, it's just like maybe $15 a month, something like that. So I figured that's fine. Um, yeah, what so, is, yes. so what do you like, get for the $15 a month? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, basically you upload it to the site, and then when I did my first one, I had to sign up for like to, to write my description to, to apply to be on Apple Podcasts and then same thing for Google Play or, or I mean, most of the rest of them were pretty automatic I guess you click to get on Spotify and, and yeah. then I guess it sends it to everywhere and then that's it it's sort of I believe it's unlimited like unlimited uh, downloads and, uh, and length of thing and all of that because I think that was the appeal to me because I don't like making decisions like with Libsyn you know, well how many downloads are you going to bet like how many how much of this or that um, so it seems fine. It's some, I mean, I think pretty much all the, I mean, that's what all these podcasting things are. It's like, it just dis distributes it to the, the different places. Um, so yeah. it's good for now. Um, but I could try anchor. I mean, I guess technically I could all, no, that'd be a pain in the butt to uh, try uploading the same thing to anchor. That probably wouldn't work. Um, there was one, when I was at the pod fest in Orlando in March, I went to this podcasting convention, uh, Everybody was taken out bowling uh, by one of these places. Uh, it's not Anchor. Is it Pod Bean? It might have been Pod Bean. Something like that. I think one of the ones that starts with Pod or P or something. And they, I think they maybe 
no, I guess they can't be free. Maybe they are free. Maybe it's another thing like Anchor. But everybody was kind of like, it was like this religion, like, ooh, thank you, Podbean, or whatever it was uh, for, for taking us bowling, and oh, we love you so much, and, and whatever. So, so yeah, then I was like, ah, oh, I should have been on my hosting with them or something. I could have gone bowling. Um, so, yeah, so there's lots of, lots of different options out there. Uh, but the key is, yeah, just record the stupid thing and, and post it on whatever, and, uh, and then you've got your show. And so do you have what so your show so what do you do you pick a different movie each week and you research it and you just joke about the movie uh so we do we do horror movie reviews and then we also do uh something that we're calling what's your sign murderer edition where we take uh real murderers or people like that and we uh deep dive into their birth chart and their astrology signs and we each like we'll start describing them and the people have to try to guess which murderer we're describing based on their astrology chart and then uh what else do we do we for our season finale that's not this monday but will be next monday we go to a haunted location in richmond and we talk about the history of the haunted location and uh different stories about people who were there things like that like you mean you physically go there and record from there yeah we did wow scary did you just record on your phone we did yeah and it turned out fine i was really nervous about how the audio was gonna be but it was fine cool yeah if you ever want uh i use a like an irig mic that i carry around that i that plugs into my iphone and i do interviews with it um and uh i'll put a description down below i think it's in my amazon influencer store that's that I'll put the description. I'm sounding like, wow, it's all, it's all sponsorships. It's all ads here. I'm making so much money, but I've made like no money from any of this. I don't even know why I bother mentioning it. Um, and so, okay. So that, that's a very you know, big season finale on location. Maybe you guys all get murdered at this haunted place. We don't know. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Oh, it's pretty cool. And then, so what's the show called again? The scary movie podcast or something? Scary movie club cast. Oh, Clubcast, that makes it a bit more unique. I'm sure there's a lot of scary movie podcasts. Okay, cool. Yeah, no doubt. And then have you been able to see, uh, like, you know, do you, do you know, does it show you who's li- how many people are listening or have you gotten comments or does anybody you know listen? Or uh, Yeah, well, we force everyone we know to listen. <laughs> Good. Um, and then uh, we have gotten some listeners that we don't know, which is great, and some, like, supportive comments, even from... Uh, we had like another podcast that was the one that gave us our first comment which was so like encouraging and sweet and meant a lot to us um and so we've gotten a little bit of traction but you know we're just trying to grow and keep putting out content and then see yeah yeah for sure where where do you see the contents or the comments uh we've gotten comments on youtube and then i think through anchor I'm not exactly sure. Um, Amanda handles the anchor. I handle the YouTube. Uh, so we did get a comment through anchor somehow, but I'm not sure if that was like on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. But so, uh, we got a couple nice ones on there too. Cool. And all the comments have been from people that we don't know. Excellent. It's probably the murderers that are listening, saying, "Hey, they talked about me." <laughs> Most of the murderers we talk about are dead. <laughs> uh, or or oh, maybe they're contacting you from the afterlife. All right. Oh, that could be a double episode of <laughs> Paranormal yeah. and True Crime. Oh, yes, I like it. Uh, and then, yeah, okay. And then, I was going to say, and then also movies, but that's not a movie. That's a real-life paranormal crime thing. Um, and then, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, YouTube. So how does that work? Do you just, because the podcast is just audio, so then do you just make it like a video file and with the title or something and you post it on YouTube? Yeah, we just make it a video file with our, um, like, art behind it. Amanda's an artist, so she made us a really adorable little background. It's on the Facebook page, the one that you accepted the invite for. So Mm. you can see it. It just has um, her cat, Pepper, is on it. And it has, like, a grilled cheese sandwich that's coming apart because we always eat a ton when we uh, get together in club. And, uh, yeah. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that, like, for the scary movie murderer podcast, the image would be, oh, it's a cat and a grilled cheese sandwich. That would be... Well, it's still us. (laughs) Still you. I think in the cheese, there's like a little skull and there's like a bat in the background and things like that. 
So little little hints that, you know, hopefully people aren't like, oh, this looks good. I'm going to listen to this podcast about kitty cats and grilled cheese. And then it's like, so yes, I'm Ted Bundy's. Like, <laughs> it's not like cats and grilled cheese are never mentioned. Ah, okay. Well, those, those are both delicious things. That reminds me, in high school, I drew a, a, a picture in art class that was just a million, like, little tiny skulls. But then it was making an image of one big skull. I don't know why I, I did that, but... I found that interesting. Hmm. Well, that's very cool. Grilled cheese sandwiches are definitely like. Do you? Is it just one kind of cheese in there? Like, what do you do? Like, use like craft slices, or are you mixing it up? No, we definitely don't use craft slices. I think a little. No, we use. Here's what we do. We do potato bread, um, pepper jack, uh, tomato slice, and then gouda. That's the official club cast grilled cheese. Except for Amanda, who only wants Gouda in hers, because she doesn't like tomato or spice. Really? All right. Well, Amanda's very picky. Actually, so I just want to show you the dog there. That's that's like... that's Joy the dog, and those are the, the two girls that uh, that walk Aww. their dog. Aw, cute. So, yeah, we uh, actually like just caved the other day and made a TikTok where we like showed how to make the grilled cheese. <laughs> it's it's a really like silly little video. <laughs> Huh. Were you dancing? It seems everybody dances on TikTok. No, we can't dance. We were stressed out just enough about being in the video. There was definitely a reason that we chose a podcast format. Um, mm. And so we even like changed our voice to this weird man's voice. It sounds like a serial killer is like making the grilled cheese. First, you put the cheese on the potato bread and then you <laughs> cut it. I love to cut, cut, cut cheese. Huh. Well, that's bizarre. I'll have to check that out. Is that the official like podcast TikTok or is it is it like Amanda's TikTok or something? Yeah, no, no. We made a clubcast TikTok. Oh my gosh, you guys are on fire. Huh. Yeah. And and it's just about how to make the sandwich that you guys eat. Yeah, and, exactly. Which okay. that's just one of the things that we eat. we'll do we'll put up more too because we're always snacking and coming up with weird ideas. We have some pretty mm. classic nachos that we make, so we'll probably do the video about those next. Oh, that sounds good. So I was distracted by the dog. So you were saying it's potato bread, and then what kind of cheese? Yeah, um, pepper jack cheese, a slice of tomato, and then gouda cheese. Okay, but then Amanda doesn't like the pepper jack or the tomato, so she says gouda on bread. Exactly. And potato bread, is that, like, gluten-free? No, um, it's just, like, a heavier kind of bread. Does it actually have potato in it? Like potato flour? It must be probably. I don't know. I think so. Why else would you call it potato bread unless it looks like a potato or something? You definitely probably. have reason on your side. Yeah, this is why I'm the the brains of this organization. Um, there you go. And uh, what do the other girls do? Like, are they all in insurance? Uh no. Uh, hmm. Let's see. One of them's a waitress. Uh, one of them works uh, in government. One of them is at a temp agency right now. So we all have just different random day jobs. Hmm. And were they all thinking of creative stuff like you? Like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm screenwriting. And hey, I'm going to write a sitcom about you all. And, and like, are they all creative types? Or they just happen to be friends you joke around with? And then you said, hey, let's do a podcast or something. Um. Well, the podcast wasn't my idea. It yeah. was probably Mackenzie and Amanda's idea mostly. Mm -hmm. Um. But then, I mean, once I get into a creative project, I love yeah, yeah. to, like, get my hands dirty and, like, you know, help out as much as I can and do whatever I can. Yeah. Uh, but I was, I, I'm the only one who likes to write, so I do the screenwriting. None of them do. Uh, Mackenzie likes to dance, so she does that. And, uh, and Amanda's an artist, so she paints all the time. And then the other one is Megan. Um, and I... I think of her as a creative person, but I'm not exactly sure, like, where I would put her as far as... Yeah, yeah we don't know what Megan's up to. <laughs> She's just over there being funny. <laughs> is, she, is she the temp uh, worker? No, she works in local government. Oh, the government. Interesting. Local government. Local Virginia government. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. So you guys are making things happening. You guys are like... You know, the power brokers, you're like, she's controlling the government, one of them serving the food, you're insuring everybody, Amanda's uh, temporarily doing things. Yeah, able to move around from place to place where we need her. Yeah. Espionage. Oh, so Amanda is the temp person. 
She is. Yeah, you got it exactly right. <laughs> yeah, because I just realized, wait a minute, I didn't know who the waitress was. I'm just, man. No, you did know. Yeah. Ah, I did know. Oh, my God, maybe I am psychic. Well, that's Ooh, exciting. That so cool. that, Yeah, I, I, I could be a guest on your show. I know. Um, I It wouldn't shock me if at some point we did something with a psychic. I'll try to resist it, but I'm sure that Mackenzie would be head over heels if we did it. Ah, yes. Mackenzie. She wants the psychic. Um, and so this is the season finale. And then what happens? Like you're off for the summer or what? No, we are getting together in a couple weeks to record for season two. And then we'll be editing. And depending how fast we can get it recorded and edited will depend on when we release it. But definitely no later than August. So maybe just like June and Jul like um, half of June and some of July off. And what does, uh, like, what makes it a season? <laughs> Just us <laughs> deciding that it is. Um, this we is do us. 10 and per season. You what? We do 10 episodes per season. So oh, that's what you've decided. And then yeah. I guess you take a little break. Like, if you're like, okay, oh, because you record them in a bit bunch and then you edit them and then you start releasing them. So that's kind of a season. Yeah, exactly. That's how we do it. Yeah. All right, and then, yeah, so we'll, you'll all sound more mature and wise for the second season. It'll be like, welcome to season two. So it's not a theme. It's not like season one's going to be all serial killers. Season two is haunted houses. It's just whatever. Uh, yeah, no, that would have been interesting, um, but we didn't. We try to do a movie review every other episode, have that as, like, our bread and butter, because, I mean, we love horror movies anyway, so we're always watching them. Uh, and then we try to, like, throw in the what's your sign murderer edition a couple times a season and then a haunted location at least once. And then I forget what we have planned for season two, but in season one, we did um, an unsolved murder and talked about the case of Garrett Phillips. Uh, that episode just came out last week, but I, in season two, we are, I don't think we're doing an unsolved murder. Oh, I remember we're doing something special because that episode will come out on Amanda's birthday and Amanda is obsessed with slasher movies. And so we're doing a, like all about slashers, like history of things like that. Oh my God. So, cause so slashers are there. Well, it's a subset of horror movies, I guess. So it's, yeah. Wow. And what's, what was your screenplay about? Uh, so my screenplay is sort of like a suspense dramedy and it centers around these three people who live together. Uh, two guys best, who are best friends and one of their girlfriends and they suddenly find themselves like broke and they need to make money for the rent and so they decide that they're gonna go and rob her like the store that she used to work at and they are total amateurs and it <laughs> turns out very stressfully <laughs> as they go oh nice it reminds me of uh what did i watch recently where the, the, the three kids break into the house of the, the blind guy to try to rob him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget the name of that, too. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I think they're making a sequel of it, too, actually. Uh, oh, oh, it's something about breath. Like, hold your breath or don't don't breathe. or. Yeah, something. you're right. Yeah. Because, yeah, you didn't want him to hear you. Uh, very cool. Well, I'll, it sounds very stressful and whatever. And so you finished the... Because you announced proudly in the group, I finished my, my screenplay. So now what happens to your screenplay? Uh, now I need to edit it <laughs> and kind of get an idea for what I was doing. So that's why I, I love that group that we're in. Everyone's so supportive and nice. And so um, I've script swapped with a couple people in there. And, um, and they're going to read it and give me some notes. And then I can go back and cut out a second draft and move on from there. Oh, that's fun. That's very nice. Yeah, I haven't really. Yeah, maybe I should do something like that with my with my screenplay since I've got one. And um, yeah, I'll have to check it out because that's the thing. I, like I was thinking recently too, because I've joined all these. Like I was looking at the groups I've joined, and most of them were like, oh, Jewish singles groups or something, and uh, and and uh, what else? Digital nomad groups because I sold my condo to be free to travel, um, and then but then I started thinking about well, what kinds of people do I like? to talk to like I don't necessarily you know it's not like oh I love meeting people who are Jewish and single like that's not the kind of person I would you know be seeking out like individually and I'm like well I like screenwriters like I've always admired like the fact that they can sit down and and, and come up with a story like like when I actually one of my girlfriends 
I met once. She said she was a screenwriter. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like just a, a person who, actually any creative person I like, like a songwriter or an author, like the fact that somebody can sit there and ideas can come out of their head and they, they entertain people. Like I just, that fascinates me and it, and it motivates me. And uh, so I thought, yeah, I should join these groups even just to, to meet these types of people. Um, and yeah, and then I, I think probably that was actually the first reason I did it. And then now I'm like, oh, maybe I could actually, you know, post. Because I, I started doing like a few weeks ago, I was like, I just want to connect with people. And, and so I started posting. Actually, I guess I've just been posting random thoughts as I go for walks at night. And then I decided, no, I'm going to post a question of the day, like just to see if I can get people to interact. So it was like, hey, everyone, uh, do you like going for walks too or whatever? Just, and I would turn into like some 10 minute free associating ramble. But there was an initial <laughs> question at the beginning. Um, and then and I thought, oh, I should share these in the group. So I started uploading them directly into like all the Jewish singles groups. And there are so many you wouldn't believe. Um, and then uh, I don't know. And then I joined some other groups like I was teaching. Uh, I don't know, I was helping somebody teach Vietnamese people English and then I'm like oh all these Vietnamese girls seem nice so I joined like date Vietnamese woman group I don't know what I was doing but I just started uploading these these questions to all the groups and then people liked them and they were all reacting but then it turns out Facebook doesn't like you uploading a video to like a hundred groups and so I got blocked from doing that so then I had to just put it on my own page and I, sh I can share it from my page but it doesn't feel as personal people are like why are you just post like I'm like can you upload to the group I'm like I can't upload to the group I can't even upload to my own profile anymore I'm screwed um <laughs> You would think that they would have at least warned you first. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Facebook, do not do this or you will be, yeah. So I, I think I can upload things to my own thing again. I've been out of jail, but um, what was my point? Uh, questions. Oh, yeah, so then I thought, okay, I'm going to start uploading. I can post my little question of the day to the screenwriters group. And I think I did uh, maybe once or twice, but then I've tailored that down. Some of the groups are like, they're like, this has nothing to do with digital nomad singles or any, or whatever, or, or and, uh, and, and I'm like, yeah, I guess that's sort of spamming the group. Like, it's a screenwriter's group. They're not like, you know, we want to see Josh's question about, uh, are, are you always late or early for things? Or what's your favorite summer smell? Like, it's just so ridiculous. Um, Hard. But, yeah, I know. It's sort of like, I would, honestly, I would love to, like, mention my podcast in the group, just because it has so many members. And I mean, you know, in case anyone's interested. But I, I kept thinking, I was like, oh, but I guess this doesn't really pertain to that. <laughs> like, I, I guess that wouldn't really be fair. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it ties in. Tie it in. What's that? I was like, but if I can find any way to tie it in, then I will. Well, well it's a movie podcast. So yeah. It sounds like it's pretty yeah. obvious. Like, hey, fellow screenwriters, just, you know, I, I also have a podcast where we, we talk about horror movies. If any of you are into those kind, if any of you like those kinds of screen plays, or, you know, yeah. it's like that or whatever, I think, I think people might be all right. Or... Or, or a lot of people will post something and say, if this isn't allowed, please delete. But I just want to let you know about my podcast. And everybody seems a big fan of you already. So, you know. I, people were so nice. I know. What I think I might do is um, we just started doing something this week, actually, on Wednesday, where we started a new hashtag on our Instagram called What's Your, What's Your Sign Wednesday. And we take, like, something super random and we assign Zodiac signs for it. So, like, I did the Hamilton songs and I like was like oh if you're a Leo then it's Skylar sisters or if you're a blank then it's blank and uh and it got really well received which was great uh we got a ton of people that we didn't know that liked it although they aren't interested in the podcast because they're like oh I don't that doesn't have anything to do with me but it's still it was nice for it to get some traction so I think that I might do like a similar one but with horror movies and then maybe I could post that in the group because I mean people are always talking about their different movies and things like that Right, right. Like what so, inspires them. what inspires them? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people will post like, "What did you think of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood?" I feel like I've seen that literal post like four different times in our group. Right, it makes it well. Didn't it win Best Screenplay maybe at the Oscars? No, it lost to Parasite. Oh, right. Of course. Um, well, whatever. I'm sure. Well, it was nominated at least. So yes, it's a very uh, yeah. screenwritery screenwritery question um yeah that's good so you would be like uh you know it's uh, like if you're a scorpio you'll like uh, friday the 13th or that kind of thing yeah, yeah something along those lines oh yeah no that's a good idea people love to you know pe people on the internet love horoscopes they love hashtags they love things yeah. that are like which one are you because they oh yes i'm 
I'm a Leo and oh my God, I love that movie or whatever. Yeah, that's, Exactly. People love by. that. Yes. Uh, and that's what I, even with my stupid questions like smell of the day, I can see that people, I mean, people like to participate and, and feel like they're having their say and feel noted. And so that's why, yeah, like any, any kind of questions, especially simple things like what's your smell? Everybody's, oh, uh, I like rain. I like mowed grass or whatever. So people like answering those kind of things. And yeah, they like to feel like, oh, I'm a Scorpio. That's so me. Like you'll see people on Instagram all the time in their stories saying, you know, here's the 10 things about Leos or, or whatever. And you're like, oh, that is, I, yeah. Pe pe people just like to feel like, you know, yeah, that I have certain personalities and people recognize me and here's things about me and, uh, you know, gets them, gets them noticed and makes them feel spotted or whatever. So that's, that's kind of fun. So that's, and then, yeah, it's good for you to give them a way to do that. And, and, and then maybe they'll discover some horror movies they didn't know. They're like, Oh my God, I'm a, I'm a Pisces. I didn't know that I would like whatever. Yeah. Obviously, I have a, a, a wide range of horror movies I can draw on for references right now, because I'm already out of them. Friday the 13th, and uh, that was about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that other one, the Don't Breathe one. Oh, yeah, Don't Breathe, which may or may not be the title. Uh, I know, close enough, though. I mean, it's the gist. Something about that, yeah. Don't, uh, don't breathe, too. <laughs> Still don't breathe. Hold your breath. I'm always, this is a word I always have trouble with. Like, I always, if I'm writing breathe or breath, I gotta go... Is there an E at the end or not? And then I go breathe. Well, I, I, I would assume, actually, well, yeah. I mean, breath must be. And then I go, okay, which one would be more common? Like, you'd always say breath, but breathe, it's like breathe is something more specific. And, okay, the more common one would be the one without the H, because that's the one you always see. So that's got to be breath, and then breathe would have the E. So, that yeah, I go through this whole mental thing. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think I'm right. Yeah, clearly uh, I no, should I, be. I would end up Googling it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like but, I probably would have known the answer if I had. Do you ever feel like that? Where like I, I would have known this information, but now that we're like talking about it and it's in question, I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well, yeah, it's like you know, they say if you ask a caterpillar to which leg do you walk with first, it'll be like, oh, now it can't walk because now you're thinking too hard about it. Yeah. You know? yeah, just just type it and take a look. Although most people don't spell correctly like you're like what do you what it's not your it's your like you know with apostrophe or whatever like it's amazing what people don't know or or don't care like maybe they just maybe i overthink things like i'll if i'm writing a text like if i say oh i'm living in my parents basement like I, a lot of time i'm typing voice typing so it'll say parents basement just plural but i go with the little arrow and i gotta move my finger up to add an apostrophe at the end of parents so it's plural parents but it's also possessive so that you don't put another s it's just parents with an apostrophe in a text or a Facebook message that, you know, somebody's going to read it in two seconds. They'll get what I was saying. Nobody's ever going to look at it again. But I somehow feel like, no, I got to make it grammatically correct. Fair uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It's probably a lot of time I've wasted making things grammatically correct. Um, that's a skill to have. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I feel proud of it. And that's why, maybe that's why I feel a kinship with screenwriters and stuff. Like, I'm hoping I want to meet people that know how to spell and know how to write. I'm like, oh my God, that would be great if I could write love letters back and forth to someone and, and, uh, and we yeah, could spell so properly. A Vietnamese Jewish girl, right? A, a nice Jewish girl? <laughs> yeah, like a Vietnamese Jewish girl, right? Weren't those the two groups? <laughs> that's it. Yes, my Vietnamese Jewish girl. Um, it's funny, actually. We, uh, we had some family friends over today who are, came in from, uh, Barry, Ontario, and they so they have a dot, so they're Jewish, and they've got maybe a son or two that like biological, but they also adopted at, le at least one, possibly two Asian girls, like maybe Chinese. Um, and so they were telling a story about how, um, you know, in school, if there was a supply teacher, she'd be taking attendance and she'd go, Okay, Hannah Friedberg, and then Hannah would put up her hand, but she's a Chinese girl, and then uh, the teacher would go, oh, right, okay, and then marker is Hannah is absent, and then the parents had to go in and say, listen, she is Jewish, and whatever, and so that they, they never made that mistake again, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of a funny scenario that people, um, you know, you wouldn't assume that somebody Asian is Jewish or, or whatever, um, although I did have a poster in high school from a museum uh, exhibit that was called the Jews of Kaifeng. There's a group of Jewish people in China or something, um, but yes, Vietnamese Jewish, probably a rare, 
rare type, but if someone were to marry me and convert, it's possible. Um, Did you know that Tiffany Haddish, um, the comedian, converted as an adult to Judaism? Yes, I was just looking her up recently, like this week. I don't know why I thought of her or what I was doing. Um, But yeah, I was looking through old Instagram where uh, there was like a big thing uh, this past Hanukkah where she was lighting the menorah and posting pictures, but she, what was she doing? (laughs) She got a little confused. I think that she was like lighting them on the wrong day or something like that. Yeah, or was she lighting I think she had like lit the whole thing instead of lighting the one candle a night. Yeah, it was something like that. And everybody's posting, uh, no, you're not supposed to light them all. No, but what was she? No, she could, that couldn't have been that obvious. But I feel like it, well, maybe I think it, was. it was. I actually really, the more, I, I'm pretty sure it was that. Okay, so. Which, yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean, it's obvious to someone who grew up in that community. But, you know, for someone who just converted, you know, you, oh, yeah, I don't... you think you like the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I felt like it was more subtle, like she had lit them from the wrong direction or she had lit two at one, but I can't think of what else it could be other than, because the, the Shema, is that what it's called? The Shema or the, no, the Shamash? God, what's the main middle candle? I can't remember. Uh, the, sh- the Whatever, I, I know you light that because then you use that to light the first one. But oh. what else could she, What I mean, I don't think it could have been something as, because I mean, there's a certain direction, like left to right, you're supposed to light them. It couldn't have been that people are like, ah, oh, you're lighting them the wrong direction, because that would be, like, really nitpicking. Um, I mean, they would, though. People on the internet are very petty. They would, but I can't see her going, oh, my God, I didn't know. Like, it's like, how do they even know? It could have been taken from the behind the menorah. Like, <laughs> um, But, yeah, so that, that's true. I guess she converted. There's some, yeah, because she was posting something about being Jewish and going to synagogue and all this thing. She so had I a really think- cool bat mitzvah, I think, and got a lot of great gifts. Oh, right. Maybe it was that. Something to do with her bat mitzvah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I messaged her. I'm pretty sure I messaged her on Instagram going, hey, uh, can I interview you for my podcast? No no response yet. It's, a, it's quite remarkable. Um, oh. but, no, but uh, I very rarely get responses back from, like I've messaged Beyonce at least a couple of times, nothing. Uh, the Rock I've said hi to, nothing. I don't know. I don't know if they check their Instagram. Um, Amy Schumer, I'm sure I've messaged. Another nice Jewish girl. Uh, But I did notice, I feel like I was following this comedian last year or something, and I noticed that Amy Schumer follows him or something. I'm like, oh, he's part of this community of comedians. They all do their things. And so uh, a couple of nights ago, my dad was watching some stand-up Just for Laughs festival stuff on on his PBR, and I was doing my taxes, but I was listening. And there was one guy who was talking about how he's 50 years old, and he's got uh, his wife is 32 or his girlfriend and they're thinking of having a kid and all of this. And I'm like, Oh, this is that guy. I think the Amy Schumer guy. Um, and then I'm like, you know, I, am regretting not having kids and stuff. And I want to be Amy Schumer's friend. I'm like, maybe this could be my buddy. So I messaged him, uh, yes, last night telling him the story, um, on Instagram, I messaged him and saying, Hey, you know, I, I'm wondering if I could ask you, like, if you're happy with what you're doing, like, it seems like your career's great. Like I kind of want to, you know, he gives me hope or whatever. And he, and he, he actually messaged back just now. And he was like, hey, thank you for, for reaching out and the kind words. I'm actually not doing any podcasts uh, for a while uh, other than my own. But can we circle back in July? So, um, That's really said, fine. And Who I said, it? no. Who was it? Um, or how old did you say he was? He was, uh, he was 50 when he did the act in the fall. And I looked up. He's 51 now. Uh it's not Here. Gary Coleman, is it? No, I'll tell you a story about that in a second. No, his name's like Alexander Tipoff or something. Oh, okay. Um, here, here. If I disappear for a second, one sec, I'll just scroll down. Uh, I'm just going through my Instagram now, and I'm looking at my notifications. Would it say? Actually, I'll just go right to Instagram. I wonder if he'll want me mentioning on his podcast. Uh, whatever. Oh, Ted Alexandro. Oh, he replied back again. I said, uh, oh, I said, nice for, guy. yeah, he says, cool, have fun. Speak to you then. I said, cause I said, uh, I said for sure. Thanks for taking the time to reply. I'm going to be on an online open mic on Sunday. So I need to write some jokes for that. You'll be my inspiration and motivation. He says, cool, have fun. Speak to you then. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Uh, and then now I'm back. 
yes, so that's nice. Nice that um, nice that he was he was chatting. Or yeah, he, it's nice to get a response. Because I originally when I was thinking I want to do a podcast, I was like, oh, I want to be like. Um, I think Mark Maron started his interviewing his comedian, fellow comedian buddies in his backyard or whatever he was doing. Uh, and I thought that's what I should do, interview comedians. And especially because I figured comedians would be fun, like it would be, you know, like joking around and that would be positive because I'm trying to, I'm in, I'm in a bit of a funk lately. And so I want to try talking to fun people and whatever. So that could be somebody fun to talk to, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, maybe by that point. He'll be, he'll be, uh, or I'll be super famous and he'll, and I'll be like, no, I don't have time for you, Ted. You can maybe be on my waiting list or something. Um, in July. <laughs> in July. Yeah. Things happen fast. You're going to have a wild June. <laughs> Why not? You think I can't do it? No, I think you can. <laughs> it's just, it'll just be a crazy ride. <laughs> it's going to be a good ride. There's a yeah. girl, um, Janelle something that lives in a van in LA and she's on YouTube. Do you know her? Yeah. She like posted, I think it was December, she posted two videos. Like one was how you have a shower in a van and and then something else about living in a van. And then she got like a million subscribers in a month. And now she's like famous and she was interviewed on Philip DeFranco and whatever. It helps to be a hot girl living in a van. Um, but it's possible. Yeah, for sure. I just need I just need to find a hot girl living in a van and then feature them in my videos. You could be my hot van girl. How? No, I wouldn't. I don't even, for Mackenzie's birthday, she really wants us to go camping, and I'm, like, being such a stick in the mud about it. I'm like, I guess, if we have to. Camping's fun. I also joined uh, Single, what? what is it, Single Campers of Ontario or something, a Facebook group, although I've never camped. I don't know. But it's <laughs> the, the idea of it seems cool. Like, oh, if I can find a girl with a tent, and then I can go camping. Actually, I should join. I wonder if they've got like single women with cottages. That would be very cool. Um, but uh, <laughs> single girls who want to sponsor podcasts. I don't know. Um, very specific. Well, there's, there's also, I've decided recently that, you know what, if there's somebody I want to find, um, then I'm just going to make my own Facebook group for it. So I've started one for called Creative Singles because I thought, you know, that's who I would want to meet, like a creative person, like somebody who does like, I like writes a screenplay and does like a horror movie podcast, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, just, just joking. Don't say, uh, don't say. Uh, and then I was like, I also wanted to meet like a, a redheaded woman so I could have redheaded babies. So I joined, I created redheaded singles. Nobody is, <laughs> nobody's joined my groups yet. I think one guy joined one of them. <laughs> so I've probably got a new boyfriend if I want one. Yeah, um, you guys found each other? Is yeah. It, did you go in the creative one or the redheaded one? Well, that's what I'm wondering. I feel like... I mean, I don't know how much it matters, but no, either I, way, it seems funny. No, it doesn't matter at all, but I, yeah, I, I think it's the redheaded one. I think so. Uh, I'll have to look that up. Because, yeah, I mean, it wasn't specific about creative either. I wonder how these groups... Go. Like, I just assumed, oh, they're suddenly going to be filled with a million people. Um, but how do you... I could go into Facebook and check which group, but I'll, I'll say it's the redheaded one. Um, but yeah, I, like I, I guess I'd have to actually start promoting it, and then it'd be a whole thing. I don't know. Ugh, I figured it's bet maybe better just to, you know, network in groups like screenwriter groups or whatever, songwriter groups, and then just meet people naturally, kind of thing. Um, but uh, what was my point? Yeah, the groups and the camping, and then yeah, some woman in the camping messaged me. She's like, "Oh, do you have a tent?" I'm like, "No, I don't have a tent. This is it's not the point. Like, I don't. You got to supply me with the tent. That's what I was hoping." Um, you were yeah. just mad that you got found out as being in the group having never gone camping. Yeah. She, there's an easy way to tell. Just ask them this question. Mm, that's true. They called my bluff. That's because yeah, when you join like these Jewish singles groups, a lot of, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, we got to make sure they're really Jewish. So they'll ask some question like, uh, you know, what do Jewish people hang on the door? Oh, look. <laughs> What's the name of the middle candle in a menorah? Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't get in. I would be, I would be, uh, I'd be banished. That's interesting. Yeah, it's like it's like those citizen questions when they ask, you know, if you're going to immigrate to Canada or whatever, you got to know the history of all this. But most people who already live here wouldn't know any of this stuff. So it's it's got to be the, the sh it's not the schma. It's the sh the the the. I'm lighting the, uh, the shamash. Ugh. You're not Jewish, obviously. 
No, don't know. Can't help no. you. <laughs> but, but you seem to know your thing. I was. I, mean, I was going to sound Jewish. Sound Yiddish, I guess. What yeah. does? I both the words you said. Oh yeah, yeah, Hebrew. <laughs> they, they do. Yeah, no. Well, the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim. Like that's a prayer. So I think you say the Shema. Like it's a different thing than the 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 Shamesh or whatever I'm trying to say. Ugh, maybe somebody's going to comment on on Apple Podcasts. Say it's called the you know whatever. Oh yeah. So I was going on some tangent about yeah which celebrities will talk to me. Um, oh yeah, you said that you had a story about Gary Goldman. Oh right. Okay. So. Um, okay. So this is a funny story. So there's this woman. Uh, she has a podcast called Don't Keep Your Day Job that I, I used to listen to. Um, and she's like a songwriter that uh, got kicked out of her, like she wasn't repped anymore. Um, I kicked off her label, I guess, but then she write, wrote commercials for, uh, wrote songs for commercials. And then people were like, oh, how do you make money being creative? And so she started this whole community of making money being creative. And she has a podcast, a big Facebook group. And then her sister lives in New York and, and seems like, you know, uh, she's like an actor and makes funny short films about dating and she does songwriting and all this stuff, like my perfect Jewish woman. Um, and then what happened here? I think, I think, I don't know. One, one of these, fa it was either my sharing my little silly questions in a Facebook group or, or maybe under one of, uh, Barb, like the sister under one of her, comments she was posting about looking for something and i left i started commenting with my little short films anyway some mo some woman messages me um saying hey you know i might have somebody to set you up with uh you know facebook messenger isn't uh isn't working out very well like could you could you whatsapp me i'm like okay that's weird because like there's a lot of, there's always fake people messaging me on facebook and everything right so i'm like ugh and I'm, but so I'm always at my guard up, which I shouldn't. I should be more open, I've learned. Um, but I was like, okay, that's weird because Facebook and WhatsApp, they're both internet data. Like, it's, so why would one work and the other not work? I don't know. But uh, I said, okay. So I said hi on WhatsApp, and she's like, um, hey, uh, yes, yeah, sorry if I don't reply. I'm just away from my phone a lot these days. And so that was kind of my second thing. Like, what do you mean you're away from your phone? Like, we're all in quarantine. Like, and it's a cell phone. Like, how are you not with your phone? That doesn't make any sense. So instantly I was like, Meh. and I said, well, can we just video chat quickly? Make sure you're real. And then there was a third strike. She said something like, uh, what was it? I don't know. Was she like, I don't have internet much. Uh, and I was like, okay, you're fake. I just sort of snapped. And then, um, and then she's like, okay, well, I don't have time to talk, you know, whatever. Goodbye. I, I'm like, ugh. So then I looked her up and I saw that she was a friend of this Barb woman. And I messaged Barb. I'm like, do you know this woman? She's like, yeah, that's my best friend. She's great. And I'm like, oh. So I told her the story. And I said, well, I think I just made her mad. Like, can you apologize? And then, so then Barb reached out to her friend and said, and then her friend said, yeah, well, I just don't like the fact that he was so quick to, to get mad and, and, and be skeptical. And that's not the kind of person I would want. And I'm like, what do you mean she would want? She said she had friends set me up with. I didn't know she was interested in me. And Barb's like, yeah, well, you shouldn't get jump." Anyway, so, so actually, Barb heard back from her and then said, you know what, you just want to talk on the phone for a minute. So we actually wound up talking for like half an hour. I went for a walk and we were talking on Facebook audio or something. Uh, and yeah, she just explained this and said, you got to be less. And I said, yeah, but all those, it just didn't sound legit. Like who's not, a, their phone, who doesn't have internet? Turns out she is literally living in the desert in Israel right now, like camping out or something. So that's oh, explained so all of it. Yeah, it sounds very cool. But why couldn't she have just said that or given me some kind of evidence? Um, and also, she barely had any pictures on Facebook. And I was like, nah, whatever. But whatever. I shouldn't have been. Because, I mean, that's the thing. If somebody is fake, then, then they're fake. You don't have to jump at them. You just, oh, well, they're, for whatever reason, pretending to be who they are. But if they're real, then they don't want to be yelled at. So, well, so I blew that. Oh, so anyway. So then I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm really upset. And, and I, I was telling her how I'm, you know wishing I'd gotten married and had kids. And then, um, and then Barb was saying, uh, yeah, well, people don't want to be around like negativity. You got to be, try to be positive. And like, you know, like for example, Gary Gallman, uh, this comedian, I said, I know, I mean, I don't know him, but I love his comedy. Uh, you know, it's classic. I've looked him up on Instagram before. She's like, yeah, he just did this. Is it a documentary or something called the great depression? Like 
about being yeah. depressed. And then, uh, and she's like, yeah, like he's a funny guy. Like he should be able to get women, but he's so depressing. He talks about being depressed that nobody wants to be around him or talk to him. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, well, he's married. He has a wife. He? Yeah, Sade is her name. Because he always makes a joke where he's like, my Sade, not the Sade. <laughs> wow. I did not know that. Well, yeah, then she's I don't know. Really beautiful. And that's why I thought that it might be him, is because I know that there's like a big age gap between them. I don't know what it is, but she was in that, the um, like the stand up documentary type thing that, it, that you guys are talking about. She was in it. Oh. Well, then what the hell is he depressed about? <sighs> well, he has, you know, just medical depression. Sometimes you just need, sometimes there are things that, sometimes you need more than just what you can do on your own without help. No, I know that. I mean, I know that better than anyone. It's like, I mean, technically, what am I depressed about? I mean, I'm depressed that I'm not still in university, living in a dorm. Like, that's not a thing. Or I'm depressed that, well, I lived, I worked in advertising for 25 years, but, oh, now I realize I should have been a university professor. I could have had the company of other professors and students and all of that. I mean, that's, I, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, it's funny because, I, well, I actually looked it up recently, and it turns out, like somebody did a study of like the what at what age people are the most depressed and it was literally like to the minute <laughs> me so like life is a you you get uh, you're depressed and then you start getting a bit happier i guess i don't know why you would um but yeah <laughs> but i think most things are uh most things are how you look at it you know like even if you're in the holocaust well that's that that's probably objectively a not a good situation but but even there, people could make music and, and see the best of the situation or whatever. Um, so some people are naturally, like I know people that are naturally just happy people, mm -hmm. like, you know, and they'll be happy with, they're not going to sit. And But I've always had regrets. Like, I, you know, even when I was like 11 years old and visiting Florida with my parents, like if I was sulking and I didn't go to get cookies with them or whatever, then I'd write in my little notebook. I had a notebook of all the things I missed out on today and stuff. So... It, it's not necessarily that, oh, it's just that I'm older. It's like I've always sort of had regrets or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But you try to focus, and, and I find that it helps me to, well, I mean, you know, just to talk to somebody like you. or you know, It's like just chatting for an hour gets me out of my own head, and then it makes you feel less lonely, and you hear about other people's journeys. So that's partly why, why I like to do these, these chats, and, and hopefully other people enjoy them. And, uh, yeah, I was hoping my podcast would be kind of like a Conan O'Brien thing where it's just nonstop yucks. It's like, hey, you know, da -da, what are we joking about? We're and maybe that would be easier if it was a movie topic. Like I listen to this podcast called The Weekly Planet. Like every week it's these two Australian guys who talk about movies and comics and TV shows and they talk about the, the latest movie news and, and whatever. And so they're always joking about that and they'll review a movie. And, and so it might be easier. Like if you're just randomly having a discussion like this, it's, I'm going to keep coming back to, well, this is what I felt bad about today, you know, like, um, but, you know, if you're doing something like you girls are doing where it's like, no, we're reviewing this movie and we're talking about grilled cheese or whatever, like, at least you've got a topic to joke about and it's yeah. something people can relate to. Like, I don't think necessarily people want to listen to me ramble about my life or Gary Gullman or whatever, but people are interested in what they're interested in, like, when I started a couple of months ago going, okay, I should actually do youtube -y things, so I filmed a couple of movie trailer reaction videos, like Morbius or whatever. And people like that because they've seen them, or, you know, they've seen the trailer too. They want to see what other people think of it. Like that's, that's what people, so I mean, maybe that would be a better thing to do shows about because then at least people will look it up. And if they want to get to know you, they could look at your Instagram stories or something. Like you yeah. wouldn't do a, you wouldn't do a random podcast. Just what would you do? <laughs> like just about nothing, just your friends sitting there talking at each other. I don't know. Yeah, I think it helps for Conan, too, that he's been, you know, a host for so long. So he's, you know, he has so much, like, experience with just sitting with people and, like, getting it to be funny based off nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah have, like, starting out, it's good to find a purpose for what the topic will be. Well, I think I would be good at that. Like, a couple of times during this chat, I've said some funny things, and then I could have oh, yeah, kept... Sure. Thanks. Yeah. No, but I, mean, I could have, I could have, you know, kept going on like, okay, I'm going to really rip into this thing, you know, keep building on this joke. Um, but he also, I mean, he's got, he opens up with like, it's him and his assistant and then some other producer guy and the three of them banter. 
and then they play some funny little music. And then today is my guest, you know, Mike Myers, and then they interviews Mike Myers. And even that isn't, I mean, it isn't a nonstop yuck fest. Like Mike Myers was saying how he was never enjoyed being on Saturday Night Live because he was always stressed that he was going to be fired and stuff. Like it wasn't constant hilarity. Um, the Weekly Planet one is usually pretty funny. Like I've never heard them say anything down. I mean, they're, maybe they're happy. Maybe they're, you know, one of, them, one of them's a teacher. And I've always thought, or recently I was thinking, God, being a teacher would have been awesome. So maybe they just have happy lives and he's always got his wife coming in and his dog and maybe his kids too. Like he's kind of built a nice life around himself. And uh, it just seems like if you do that, then you have a lot more comfort around you to sort of allow you to be creative, which is the opposite of what I assumed. I always thought, oh, you know, I better be single because then I can still do jokes about dating and I better not be tied down to a wife and kids because, oh, then I can't do comedy or whatever. No, it's the opposite. Um, 10% battery. Um, you know, if you've got the comfort of not having to be looking for dates or whatever, like, and you've got people around you, then, you know, you can do stuff. And now I realize, God, like I, this podcast, I listened to uh, the Andrew Clavin show, like this conservative politician guy, he, he had his son on recently who just graduated Cambridge or whatever. And his son's got a new podcast since they chatted or, or Will Smith is starting things with his son. I'm like, Oh my God, it didn't occur to me. I could have had like 20 year old kids now and dan doing TikTok dances with, but again, you can't change the past. Um, and I certainly wasn't thinking 20 years ago, Oh, I should, I need somebody to dance with on TikTok because that didn't exist like 20 minutes ago. Um, so yeah, it's kind of keep, keep going. And, uh, Right. So we were talking because you already mentioned Gary Gallman and uh, yeah, the Alex. So I didn't know he had a, a, a beautiful young wife. So good for him. Yeah. Man, um, I, I, do. I love Gary Gallman. He's one of my favorite comedians. He's so oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I think. I can't remember. I know there's a podcast where somebody dissects jokes and I listened to him interview like uh, Jim Gaffigan, like sort of dissecting one of his jokes. I, I listened to a dissection or a review. Maybe it's just an article on Yahoo about one of Gary Gallman's jokes. Was it the. The one about the, um, I don't know, I mean, there's a few good routines he has. Like, I like the one about uh, people naming or abbreviating the states. Yes, that one is so funny. And I think the article was talking about how, you know, it just said, ah, whatever. But it's so, so meticulously crafted and it took, like, years to perfect. And then you get to the, the receptionist and whatever, Dottie or whatever her name is and all of this stuff. Like, it's not, something like that doesn't. You know, you don't just spill it out. Like, he really crafted that, which is, which is amazing to see. And then he goes on Tonight Show or whatever, and, like, it's to the, you know, it's like a, the perfect joke or something, the article was saying. Because um, most jokes and, and most, you know, probably the ones I'm going to tell on Sunday's open mic or, you know, you write it in two seconds. You're like, eh, whatever. Like, it's not like a, a work of art. Um, so, yeah, no, he's definitely, because I think years ago a friend, like, told me about this guy and, uh, yeah, he was talking about fruit salads, and he's talking about, like, how the, the grape yeah. is impervious to the other taste, but the grapefruit takes it all over. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was funny how he personifies the fruit. And, like, gets, and I, I, I aspire to that kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, doing something that's kind of universal. Everybody can relate to the fruit salad or whatever, and it's kind of timeless. It's not like a joke about, oh, the quarantine that'll be expired in two minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, so definitely, definitely a good comedian. So I, I'm sure, I feel like I've messaged him on Instagram and I feel like maybe he replied saying something like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what. Here, let me, let me check. I'm going to check right now. Uh, so I've disappeared from video, but I'm just going to search in my, my little messages here. Gary, uh, Gary V, no, Gary Gullman. There he is. Let's see. In my messages. No, I don't see any messages. So, uh, album version of The Great Depression. Oh, so it must... Okay. Uh, huh. Well, no. So maybe I never messaged him, or maybe he commented on something. Or maybe I messaged him on Facebook. That's possible. I feel like I heard something back from him, and I was like, whoa, that's so cool that, uh, that Gary Gullman messaged back. So yeah, people like that. That's kind of... You know, they're small enough. I mean, they're famous, but they're small enough that they might occasionally play. Like, I just got a message back from uh, Patton Oswalt. Um, wow. Yeah, because I, I left a comment. He just posted something about his uh, his new girlfriend. And 
and how and how uh, yeah, I was going to mention this earlier about spelling, like how they messaged each other, typing on Facebook Messenger every night for a few months, and and then you know they realized they never want to not do that, and, um, and so I said, oh, that's so beautiful. I hope I can meet somebody to message with, and uh, he he liked the comment, and then I messaged him saying thanks for liking my comment, and then how did this come up? Oh, it was literally the next day that coincidentally. Facebook sent me a memory uh, saying seven years ago today, um, what, what did I have done? Uh, oh, I messaged Pat Oswald on Facebook. So I was trying to decide whether I should just start using a page or I should still use my profile. And I was like, how did you decide? And he's like, oh, I have this page, but I also have a Facebook under a pseudonym just for my friends and family. And I said, oh, thanks for the advice. So then I sent him a screenshot of that saying, look, it was seven years ago today that you replied. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. And, uh, and that was it. And then I said, oh, by the way, if you want to be on my podcast and, you know, blah, blah. So I, he hasn't replied to that yet. Um, but you never know. Uh, yeah, never. <laughs> Ted did. So whatever. Uh, but also, like, the bigger people have to be more careful about who they're on. Like, there's this actor, uh, Doug Jones, that I interviewed at a film festival once. And they used my question as kind of the headline in an article about him in Vulture. Uh, he's got a hundred thousand followers. He's like, he's, he's always playing the monster in Guillermo, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Am I saying that right? Uh, movies. And he's in Star Trek now. Um, but, uh, so we, we've been messaging and stuff, but he's like, Oh, I'd have to ask his agent, like my agents and stuff. Cause like people who have, you know, actual professional representation and stuff, they, they, they got to look out for their, their image. They can't just randomly let some guy chat with you on Instagram who says, hey, man, and then says something stupid, and then it's like, oh, crap. Um, and that's why, I guess, that, you know, that's why on red carpets you have to get a permit, and, and then you know, they know who exactly the people are, and they say, okay, now you're going to talk to this person. It's, it's not just uh, random weirdos. Um, and then even then, there's that, you know, that guy that sprays water on celebrities, like did it on Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise wanted to punch him in the face. And you, you never know what kind of idiot you're going to get on a red carpet um so that's all a good story we've talked for an hour and 16 minutes who would have thought yeah. pretty good how, how long are your podcasts normally uh we try to keep them around the 30 minute mark but uh some of them this season have been like 40 something i think the longest one was close to 45 yeah i think that's fine i think especially for something like you guys do that you know, it's it's a specific topic that people are interested in, whatever. It's it's a good good amount. The uh, the weekly plan, it's always like an hour and a half. So usually I'll listen for a bit before bed and then I can stretch one out all week. Although lately I've just been listening to the Ben Shapiro show where he rants about politics for an hour every night. And I probably shouldn't. It just gets me upset and riled up. And I also really want to hear it. And so, like, I try to stay awake for the hour. And then I'm like, okay, well, that didn't help me fall asleep. No, I'm still up. And now I've got nothing to listen to. Um, so not the best, but maybe I'll start listening to your guys' show and, and that'll help me sleep. That'll be a nice thing. Hopefully there's, well, that's the thing. If there's only 10 episodes, ugh, yeah, I guess I'll have to do one a week or something. Well, there's, there's another podcast to listen to. All right. Lots of stuff. Oh my God. Then I got to see some scary movies that you talk about. Then I'll be scared. Oh my God. So much. Yeah, it's there. definitely with our podcast in particular, it's definitely better if you can watch the movie first, you'll enjoy it more. Yes, we, and that's, we do all the spoilers. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I always did with Weekly Planet. Like, I'd see, okay, okay, this week they're going to... Like, they do a half hour of sort of movie news, and then it says in the description, okay, we're going to talk about, you know, the new Star Wars movie for 10 minutes, and then the spoilers will begin at, you know, this time. And so I'm always like, okay, I, you know, I want to actually go through their back catalog and look up the movies that they talk about and then watch them and then hear that what they say about it. That's, that would be the fun way to do it. So yeah, I, w I could look up what movie you're doing and that would be a fun kind of evening to sort of be like, you know, watch the movie and then listen to your guys talk about it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and you could make the grilled cheese and then you feel like you're at the clubhouse. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't, I wasn't even thinking of, I was just thinking alone or what, that's what people could do with someone. But yeah, if I could get a girl to do that with, all right. If anybody's listening this far, and you're a red-headed Jewish Vietnamese woman, uh, then uh, then please uh, let with me know. And we're, with a tent. Ah, oh, see, perfect. See, you're my comedic uh, my, my comedic buddy. Did you see um, Jerry Stiller passed away like last week or something? I did. That was so sad. Yeah, and I didn't really know his history or whatever, but it looks like he was, you know, had his comedic 
wife and they, you know, for what, 50 years or whatever, they did shows together and comedy. And I'm like, God, can you imagine like, or like, um, George Burns and Gracie or all, all these sort of power couples that, and I don't know, it's funny. Like a friend of mine was a director years ago. Uh, he passed away of cancer, but you know, he finally found a girl 20 years younger than him and, and uh, had three kids. I emceed his wedding and then three years later gave a speech at his funeral. Um, Aww. but, uh, but I remember, you know, that telling him like, oh, you know, I'm dating this girl, but she's not, I don't know, she might be dating a comedian or something. He's like, no, 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 you don't want to be dating another creative person. Like, you know, then you know, that's all you talk about or whatever. You can just date like a normal person who's like a dental hygienist or whatever. And then, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I still think it would be cool. Like even Colin Mockery um, and his wife are both like improv comedians and probably do stuff together. And... Colin Mockery, he's so funny too. Oh, my sister... Here, I'm just going to switch headphones for one second here so I can plug in my phone so it doesn't die before we end. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm running out of iPhone headphones. These ones don't work. These ones work, but they only work in one ear. But fortunately, it's the ear with the microphone. So here, hold on one second. Okay. So I have to switch to this. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because then I can plug in with the other. Because I was using, uh, like, the FireWire, or whatever you call this, um, headphones. So I figured for this one, I want to care about the audio, because Nadine's a screenwriter, so I want to make sure it's a very good discussion. Um, but it's, it's a very old iPhone. It's like an iPhone 6S, and uh, the battery... Doesn't doesn't last the day. I keep having to charge it all day. And my yeah, dad's do you like, have something crazy? I have a worse phone than you. I have a flip phone. Can you see it? Yes. This is that's, what I do. that's your actual phone? Yeah, yeah. This is my phone. This is how I call and text people. Wow. And uh, how is... Why? How? Um, just because I like it. Because I'm crazy cheap. And I have no desire to pay for things that are the best new technology and then a month later it's not and and it's never failed me it does what i need it to wow i've never seen anything like that i feel like i'm interviewing you and that's the twist here it's going to be like what do you mean I, it's 1985 and i'm like wait what how am i messaging um like okay what how can you be doing podcast okay so you clearly weren't recording your podcast on your phone no, yeah, no, not my phone. Um, uh, Amanda and Mackenzie are the ones who like did that type of stuff. But then I helped with the editing. I have a good laptop because I have a good brother, so he got me a laptop. Wow. So he's like, listen, you got to access. You got. This is so cute. Okay, so if you're texting, like you got to press like the numbers on the keypad like three times to get a letter. Uh, well, it has a special thing where you can just like type out what you want and then it guesses what word you want and if it's right then you leave it if it's not then you like have options that you go through yeah yeah no i i remember all of that good lord um and is that like a a really old phone or is it just like a newer phone like it but it's just like an old technology phone uh, i i believe that it was not this past Thanksgiving, but the Thanksgiving before that I got this flip phone because my other flip phone was breaking in some way. So One of the still, buttons wasn't working. So they still sell flip phones and you can still, like, do you, does your phone company give it to you or do you buy it, like, at a convenience store or something? And... Uh, we bought it at Verizon. Wow. Yeah, me and whatever, like, crotchety old people don't want smartphones. Yeah, I mean, because it would be kind of cool just to have a phone that, Actually, you dial a number, or I guess if he, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine, huh? Because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm saying my old iPhone, but clearly, yeah, you've got me beat. Um, but I remember, and it's all in the past 10 years, like when iPhones suddenly had the capability to film video. And then instead of writing a Facebook status, I'm like, I'm going to film something called a Facebook video status. And then I filmed myself saying, hey, a homeless guy just hit on me on a bus again like happened last week and I wrote a description about it, but, um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, and then I guess now that's called a vlog or who knows what that is, but I was yeah. like, that's pretty cool. I can film on my phone. And then, from then on. Now, now they want what? it to be live. It's called going live. 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Sorry, what did you, you cut out there? You were saying now it's different. Or? Oh yeah, like now it's like even doing a vlog, like you said, or like a video status, it's not good enough. People always want something like bigger, better, more current, and so now they want people to go live on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and and Instagram and Facebook want you to as well. So they, you know, that's why you're getting alerts every time Tom Green goes live or whatever. It's like, oh, and then. You know, I'm about to type something else, but now, oh, now I've got that alert, and now I'm suddenly watching. I didn't want to watch them live, whatever. And then you feel like you got to watch it because it's live. It's happening right now. You know, like, um, yeah, it just keeps you glued to your phone, and it also, I guess, feels more immediate. So I was thinking, like, maybe I should start interviewing people over Instagram Live or whatever. Um, yeah. I was actually just interviewing a woman. Oh, I didn't record it, but, like, the one I was talking to uh, before dinner, uh, she was, she's in Argentina and she's like, yeah, you should interview people like uh, you should go on Facebook or on YouTube live or because I saw on her YouTube. She had a live stream. She's like, yeah, I interviewed somebody like I go through OBS and and then uh, people can interact and it's a whole thing. I'm like, yeah, I just assumed that. I don't know, it might be more of a strain for the, the Wi-Fi if it's live, but I guess it wouldn't be any different than Skype. You're still online, but although it's, it's I find it's difficult to do an interview with someone if you're looking at the comments and what are people saying and I don't know. But it's another way to do it. Why not? So again, it's all content. Just, you know, do it. None of it matters. Justin Bieber's been going live during the pandemic and just say, what are you doing? You know, it's just people sitting there and playing piano or whatever. Whatever. You could even do a special live episode of the Scary Movie Club cast and uh, take Maybe. I don't, we're, not, we're not ready for that yet. But no, maybe no. eventually. We yeah. The more that we have edited, because uh, Amanda and I pretty much edited this season, and the more that we edited, the more that we were like, why are we so bad at speaking? Why do we say things that aren't words? What is wrong with us? So we're but, not ready to go live. But why do you think that would matter? Like, I think people like to hear the mistakes and, and, and uh, you know, the way you really talk. I'm sure that's what they want to hear, not, like, have it edited perfectly. Ow, a mosquito is bitten. Sorry. See, there's an example of something I'm not going to edit out. Yeah. Do you do I... any editing on these videos? Nope. I mean, it's, I've only done four of them, but I've just found in the past, like, I don't know, like once I have to edit anything, it's over. Like I've still got, I uh, like on this Costa Rica trip I went on five years ago, I filmed like an hour of footage a day and I'm like, okay, I'll edit it into a vlog later. It's like, it's still sitting on my computer. Cause it's like, I can't do it. There's gotta be. And yeah, Ooh, like what, Hmm? You should do that now because people are wanting to travel and can't right now. So that's like a hot topic. So you should go in and do it now. It's so relevant because of quarantine. That's, that's true. And I started, my dad and I were driving to Florida a few years ago and I bought like a cigarette lighter charger to stick in the car so I could charge my laptop and edit as we go. And I guess I started like day one. I think basically I would just drag every video in and then I was like maybe trimming the beginning or the end. But I think if I do it now, I would just drag them all in. It's like, here it is, raw footage. It's like an hour and a half of every clip strung together. Edit it yourself, people, if you want. Or you, you could want. do like a highlight reel. Yeah. Like, through and get like the best parts. Because I will say that I think that that's also a new thing with like today's culture. Like all these kids on TikTok and things like that is that everyone wants short, fast, the best. Like it, it does yeah. seem like people are getting pickier about like the length of things, which is silly oh. to me. No, but I mean, it, it makes sense. Like, why would somebody invest? I mean, like, for example, why would somebody be listening to this for an hour and a half unless they're yeah. fascinated with it? Um, I mean, it's probably a 20 minutes is a, a good little length if they're going to be really interested. I mean, if this was a Joe Rogan discussion with, like, you know, Elon Musk or, or Robert Downey Jr., maybe people would listen to that. But even that, I wouldn't. You know, I'll watch a YouTube clip of a 10-minute highlight or something. Um but yeah, I just don't. I don't. I can't see myself watching an hour of footage trying to edit it for ten day, like ten hours. Of, like it would never. It's not going to happen. So I think eventually, even my friend who who took me on the trip, he's like, cause he gave me a little discount. Cause he's like, if you can film it or whatever. I, I eventually just said, here, here's the login. I'm sharing the videos in Google Photos. Go and see everything I've got. And so he took a few and posted like one or two individual clips or something. It's just too much. So if I was going to do it again, I don't even know what I would do. I want to invent some kind of app that automatically edits as you go like sort of I'm filming and then I stop and then I start filming again and then at the end of it it's all one one video rather than a bunch of individual clips because I think I think that would be a very cool vlogging app I don't know if something exists like that but I should look into it because um, otherwise I would just do it like I do with my Instagram stories like here's a little hey clip but you know if you're not near wi-fi or 
um, in the middle of Costa Rica, you know, you're going to just get grainy little clips on your Instagram. It's not the same as a nice video of all this stuff, but, but you're right. Now people are sitting around and wanting content and want to travel virtually. So you're right. Maybe now is the perfect time. I also went on Mexico with a girl for like a week and I haven't posted those videos. So got to dig it up. Got to post uh, these little interviews. I've got three interviews with my millionaire website building friend who lives in LA that I need to post uh, from October. Um, and yeah, you were asking if I edit, like, I, I mean, I can't, I, I mean, I would have to go through an hour and a half and watch this to find little things to cut out. It, I mean, it might be well, if you're better. not willing to watch it for an hour and a half, then you can't expect anyone else to be willing to. <laughs> well, uh, but also, I, I was here for it, so I know what we said. If somebody wants to listen <laughs> yeah, to it, it's, 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 it's all a That's surprise. What we all say on the Clubcast when a new episode comes out, we force all of us to listen to it, because we're like, if we're not willing to listen, who else mm. <laughs> True, true. Well, yeah, so maybe this went a bit overboard, but, you know. It's, it's tough because, I mean, and part of this thing, too, is, though, I mean, the discussion we're having, it's more, I mean, that's the idea. I feel like it's kind of fun that we go from one topic to another and, like, it's, it's the journey of the topic. It's not necessarily like, okay, what was the 10-second little clip? I mean, I guess perfect, you know, in an ideal world, we'd go through and, or I'd say, okay, I'm going to take this 10-minute chunk where we talked about Gary Goleman. It would be like, Josh and Nadine talk about Gary Goleman or something. Yeah, um, or Tiffany Haddish. Or Tiffany Haddish. That's a good one. Yeah. What were you saying there, sir? <laughs> Yeah, it's like the title could be like, "Can Josh figure out what the how, what the name of the menorah candle is?" Right. Yeah. Shama. Shama. You're like, watch till the end. Spoiler alert: He can't. Right. <laughs> Gonna have to look it up. I could. So should I Google it? You're sitting. You're sitting at a computer. No, but you're typing on your on your computer too, right? And I was like, look it up on your phone, but you couldn't, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, or do you have like you know the old phone phones? You should... Text someone. You could text a friend. I used to have. Somebody, uh, a friend gave me, a woman I used to work with before there was iPhones and stuff, she gave me like an old flip phone, or it was a new flip phone, uh, that her boyfriend had worked at a phone company and she didn't want it. And then I, I opened it once and I was like, oh, there's already a phone number on it. And I think I called them and I'm like, can I get this phone number off? They're like, no, you can't. It's not your phone or whatever. So then I put it away. But then it was like a couple months later, a long time later, I was like, wait a minute, there's a phone number on it. Where's that bill going? And so I just realized, because that's, you know, if I was traveling, um, I could use it, like, to call long distance. So I would call my girlfriend, and I'd be like, hey, I'm calling from the magic phone, is what I would call it, because it's like, I don't know where this bill's going, and I would text her or whatever. And there was also a little thing, like, sort of web access, like there's a little button you can press and maybe Google something or something. Um, But yeah, this lasted maybe a year or something, and she would take the phone. I think I gave her the magic phone when she would go to New York so she could call me. and then at some point, the magic phone just stopped working. I'm sure somebody at the phone company was like, what is this? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I remember having the little buttons to Google. I mean, that's just so cool. That's so, uh, so cozy, you know, to be like, you know what? I'm not going to be flipping through Instagram all day. I'm not going to. I mean, if you, do you also have like a digital camera so you can take pictures or do you not care about that? Yeah, I'm not so good with stuff like that. So I don't <laughs> do much of it. Wow. I feel more relaxed just uh, being in your presence. This is, do you live in like a, a little cottage or something? No, uh, just a normal, nice house. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen some bugs flying around there. Do you have the windows open? <sighs> yeah, it's so hot here and it's summer. And uh, so we are, everyone's starting to have bug problems. One of my friends started getting ants the other day. Now mm. these bugs have come into my house. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they're not mosquitoes because I've, I've been getting bit out here on the porch. And that's the problem. I was staying with my parents, and so there's no, and, and there's no, I can't, the Wi Fi doesn't reach the basement. So it's like there's not anywhere. Like otherwise, I got to stand upstairs and I'd be talking loudly and they'd be like, ah, you're disturbing us or whatever. So, so yeah, yeah. so I came out on the porch and then I guess I, the Wi Fi seems to be okay out here. Like I think before it was weak enough that I had to keep going inside, but seems all right. So I'm just churning these things out, and uh, yeah, I guess I, I'm, I'll try to make sure I upload them all tomorrow just to get them out. Like it always takes me so long to write the descriptions and 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 then add all the hashtags on like on the both on the podcast and the and the YouTube. But it's just I think you just got to focus for the 15 minutes it takes or whatever and just do it because yeah. you can always. You can always go back into it and change the hashtags or write more descriptions. But I think it's important just to get it out while it's 
fresh on your mind. And then, because I, I think that's what it's about too. Like people know, oh, this is coming out every day or every second day or whatever it is. And then they look forward to it. And then they can be like, okay, well, you know what? When I go for my walk or when I'm falling asleep, I'll listen to the first 20 minutes of, of Celebrity Josh. And, uh, and, and I don't know. Who knows? Like, I keep thinking, like, nobody's ever going to listen to this. This is pointless. But, I mean, there's billions of people in the world. People are looking for things. Maybe somebody will discover it and go, you know what? I kind of like, I don't know, I like his take on things. I like, I like his searching, and it kind of speaks to me, and I feel like his friend. And, you know, because, like, me, I'm like, I don't know what I, but, yeah, of course, I wouldn't listen to myself. I already know what I think or whatever, right? So, but I would maybe listen to somebody. Like, I would listen to Nadine talk to herself all day. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You probably could. I do talk to myself sometimes. I knew it. All right. So I guess we should wrap this up. Um, I, are you the type that, you know, at the end of every show, and I don't even know why I bother, but I'm like, oh, is there like some place you want people to follow you or on Instagram or whatever? Or, uh, or I guess yeah. people should subscribe to your podcast, I guess. so. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, we're on YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, Apple, uh, yeah. Google Podcasts. You can find us pretty much everywhere. Um, yes. It's Scary Movie Club Cast. All right. And then I guess we can look that up on TikTok and Instagram as well. Yeah, exactly. If you want some grilled cheese recipes. And today's Thursday. So what's uh, what's Nadine up to like Friday for the weekend? Like what a, if I was, you know, part of your world, what would I be watch, seeing happen? Let's see. Uh, Friday, Amanda and I are going to do a little bonfire. Just the two of us. A little quarantine bonfire. Of course. Um, and uh, work on this lamp that she's trying to create because she is an amazing artist. So she's making this like a, it's supposed to look like a fortune teller's crystal ball lamp, mm. um, which I'm not going to be any help with that, but I'll, I'll just be present um, and uh, and we'll work on things for season two. And then uh, the rest of the weekend, I'm supposed to go over to one friend's house and we're going to do one of those little Disney nights that people have been doing where they like make the Disney grilled cheese and um, and like put the kids in the laundry baskets and make them feel like they're on the roller coaster. We're going to do one of those. What uh, are you talking about? Sh- sh- should I know about this? What's a Disney grilled cheese? Like in the shape of Mickey Mouse? No. Disney apparently serves this grilled cheese at their park. And I haven't had it at the park, but the recipe looks amazing. Um, and they published a bunch of their recipes. So you can make like the Dole Whip and things like that. So that's what people are doing is they're doing little Disney nights in their house. So oh, and then so you, so you have a friend with kids or you're just going to sit in the basket yourself? No, no, we're going to put the kids in the basket. Uh, yeah, she has kids. And then I have a niece that I'll probably bring. Hmm. I've got an eight year old niece. She would love that. Yeah, should do it. Would be fun. Yeah. All right. I'll bring her down. It's, it's funny when you said put the kids in the basket. It's like, have you seen the movie uh, Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. Yeah, it's like put, she, she puts the lotion in the basket or whatever. Yeah. It's like. Put the kids the in the basket. The skin. It, the it, put, it puts the lotion on the skin. Yeah. <laughs> I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching. Exactly. Uh, I know. I knew I couldn't do it. That's why I didn't try. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, iconic. Yeah. He, um, what's that guy's name? Anthony Hopkins? Yeah, he's on Instagram doing little uh, dance challenges or something. That's cool. Yeah. Good for well, him. thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, filling my night with uh, with pleasure, and uh, hopefully uh, we can have you on again. I, I looked up sort of the conventions of like how to name the podcast or like make the the uh, the URL, and I looked up Joe Rogan, and he just does like he would say Nadine Bridges or whatever, and then if he has that person on again, it'll just be Nadine Bridges two or something. So we can look forward to that. Yeah, but thank you. All right, all right. Have a good night. You too.